You're listening to the FYI podcast with Josiah Keneally and Mikey Keneally. We're your hosts. Thanks for tuning in. It's a joy to come into your earbuds, your car stereos, your dorm rooms, wherever you're at. We just want to say thanks for listening and joining us on this journey as we talk about faith, mm-hmm. life, and adulting at FYI. Really, you know what? We get one shot here on planet Earth. And we want to orient our lives around what matters most. Right. We want to make much of God and his name, bring glory to the name of Jesus. And we're in a mini series on the adulting part, I guess, as today's question is episode five already on the FYI podcast. Today's question is how do I live out my faith at work in the marketplace? What a great question that is. You know what, this one excites me because I think so many of the people listening, Mm -hmm. you know what, there might be a few people listening who are like pastors or Christian leaders or in in the mission field, you know, like um, what some would call quote unquote ministry, but I view work and life Mm -hmm. and vocation as ministry when it's done to the glory of God. We talked last week about Mm -hmm. the sacred secular divide because A.W. Tozer actually says it's not there. It's right. not whether, you know, what we, what we do, it's, it's actually why we do it. Yeah. Our motive determines whether something's sacred or secular. And um, Michael, one of the organizations that we've been a part of is Chi Alpha mm-hmm. with campus ministry, ministering to college students. And Chi Alpha really leans into this space. You want to just like share why or your observations about this? Well, the mission that we are currently on, if you are anything Chi Alpha related, is we want to prepare people for ministry, missions, marketplace. We want to go to our, you know, Jerusalem, Judea, and beyond. Like, so it starts with us in our neighborhood, us on our college campus, us equipping the individuals that come to our events. Um, once they do say yes to God is, first of all, let them to know, like, everything we do, work as though you're working for the Lord. And if we're going to go to Matthew 28, go out and make disciples who make disciples, meaning followers of Jesus, we want to raise people who are following Jesus and see that multiplication. And so that's pretty much our mission is to see people come to Christ and to go um, tell literally to the ends of the earth what God is doing and who he is and how he can change their life like he has for so many of us who are on staff. Maybe you're a student listening and your life has been radically changed um, through Chi Alpha, not because of Chi Alpha. Christ is the because, but through Chi Alpha is essentially what we're doing here. So until all have seen and heard. That's right. And look, like here's the reality is I think a lot of times we elevate maybe the missionary guest speaker, and we've been missionary guest speakers, so we're not knocking that. I think we elevate sometimes the the pastor or the Christian leader as like they are doing God's work. And um, I, I'm not minimizing that. I, I think you can do that f- for the glory of God. But we, uh, like, time out for a second. Nobody's born a Christian and nobody's born a pastor, mm-hmm. right? So most of us have had jobs in the marketplace, and mm-hmm. that's where we're really leaning in on this question is how do I live out my mm-hmm. faith at work in the marketplace? That's the majority mm-hmm. of people. Yeah. Like the 95-plus percentage of people are in the marketplace, This is where people are. And then if you look at our time, we get 168 hours per week. Mm -hmm. And we're spending 40, sometimes 50, 60 Mm -hmm. hours plus commuting doing what? Working. And another 40, 50, 60 hours plus is spent sleeping. So you want to make sure you have a good mattress and you want, you want to make sure you have a good pair of shoes. Like I've heard experts say this because you spend so much time sleeping, you want to make sure that your sleep hygiene is right. And then really you spend so much time in a workplace, in the office. Like this is, you spend years of your life preparing mm-hmm. for a career, a vocation. Like I love what Timothy Keller, he says that every good endeavor That's what we're talking about today is every good endeavor. So you might be, I'm just going to think and list off some careers. You might be a pharmacist listening to this, or you might be on track Mm -hmm. as an engineering student. You might say, you know what? I'm a graphic designer. Or you might say, I'm a college student and I'm in something in the business marketing lane Mm -hmm. here for a second. And you know what? Like 
let's not focus on the destination as much as the journey for a second and being part of a campus ministry like Chi Alpha, many times we see college students become prepared to share their faith in a hostile, secular environment. Especially if you go to a community college, a public college, or a mm -hmm. university, right. chances are that at times you felt like you're the only Christian on your floor. Or in the class that you're in, you're the only known believer that you know. So maybe you, the reality is you might be on your campus feeling like, yeah, most of the time it feels like I'm the only one living out my faith. Mm -hmm. Look, I think that that's a great training ground for the career, for the marketplace, because this is why it's vital to be a part of the local church. This is why it's great to be a part of a small group, to get together with a group of guys and a group of gals to open the Bible and to study it, because we are called to be a light in the darkness. Well, I think that's where the enemy really creeps in, is he puts that lie in our mind or our classroom or our dorm room of thinking like, you're the only one. You're the only believer. What are you going to do if they say this about you, when they say that? And I think when we make up that story in our mind about what or how people perceive us as a Christian or a Christ follower, I think that that's where we give the enemy a foothold of feeling intimidated because he doesn't want us to know who we are and whose we are in Christ. He wants to make us feel incompetent. He wants to make us feel inadequate. He wants to make us feel like we do not belong. And guess what? Honestly, on this earth, we are considered foreigners, foreigners and strangers. Yeah. Because our eternity is not on here on earth. Our eternity is essentially in heaven. This place is not our home. Right. We're travelers traveling through. Right. And I think so many times why we're here is we're going to see, we want to see how many people we can take with us, not in Micah's name or Josiah's name, but in the name of Jesus. And if the enemy can get you thinking you're the only one, you will become ineffective, right? That's what he wants. But I mean, overall, we need to know who we are and whose we are when it comes to um, following Christ. And the best place to start understanding that is in middle school, high school, and college. Because when the real world does hit you, if you don't believe in anything or something, you will fall for anything. And that's where we just want to equip you to be able to do that. So how do you be the light in a dark place? Oh my gosh. We are going to dive into, in just a second, five ways that we're called to be a light in the darkness. This mm -hmm. applies really to vocation, work. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of it applies to look. Being a college student, that mm -hmm. is a lot of our full-time jobs right now listening and leaning into this space and conversation. And I think back to eight years of my life that I spent working part-time, mm -hmm. sometimes full-time. I had a number of different roles and jobs and titles, but for eight <clears throat> years from 2006 till 2013, I worked at Grand Slam Sports and Entertainment in Egan, and then it was actually moved to Burnsville location. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I mean, I remember calling it, people would call in 952-224-0413. Grand Slam Burnsville, this is Josiah, how can I help you? You know, like that was the hat and the jersey that I put on for a second. And I remember giving people directions on the phone. I remember checking in birthday parties and I loved that place and that job. Like it was such a fun atmosphere. Like it was an entertainment mm -hmm. center. So it fit kind of um, just a lot of my personality and gift mix. And I remember being 18 years old, Justin Bieber shows up. And he rents the place out on what, June 18th, 2010. And my manager calls me like, get down here quick. I put a polo shirt on. I stopped for a haircut. I thought this is the day that I'm getting promoted. We've been talking <laughs> about it. My time has come. I didn't know that part. <laughs> my time has come. June, I think 18th or 28th, 2010. And lo and behold, I show up for work and nice it's baby. Justin Bieber <laughs> and his entourage. And I'm you know, young and he's even younger. And this was young Justin Bieber. And like he had the place, it was close to customers. And that was truly the day I was supposed to be promoted and it ended up being the next day. Oh, but I remember nice. being a store manager. I remember hiring like 35 of our church's youth mm. group students who now we just went in last week to the same place, Grand Slam. Right no longer my workplace. I have not worked there, guys, in over nine years. Haven't punched the clock. But you know what? Parts of it felt like I never left because Daniel, who was the store manager that day, checking us in, 
getting us, <laughs> selling us our batting tokens as now customers. You know what? He was one of the people that I hired that now nine years later, he's the manager in charge mm -hmm. and leading the company to new places and new spaces. And I, I just get excited about that. But I remember um, just recognizing that, you know what my call was? It was to do that work, vacuum that mini golf course for God's glory. And sometimes it was cleaning up birthday party throw up. And sometimes it was taking out the trash. But you know what? Sometimes it was serving Justin Bieber. And you know what? It's all done for the glory of God. And I remember what really helped me realize is, you know what? At the time, I was not a licensed or ordained minister of the gospel. Nothing like it. But I just remembered, you know what? I'm the only one in this workplace claiming to, to live out the Christian faith, claiming right. to be a follower of Christ. So you know what that makes me? I am now sent here by God as the pastor to this community. Mm -hmm. I'm the pastor of this workplace. So you know what? When I, have a, when I have a customer who's upset, I get to carry the peace in the presence of Jesus. When I have a, a, a coworker, mm -hmm. an employee who's struggling in life, I get to show up for them. Right. And that's being a light in a really dark place. Well, I think with that, we have to be mindful of our marketplace, quote unquote, looks different in comparison to everybody else. So if you are a pharmacist, be the best pharmacist you can be at the location you are planted. If you are a teacher, be the best teacher in That's that good, classroom, man. in that school. And I would just say, I remember one of my jobs, just to be mindful, like, okay, being a follower of Christ does not necessarily mean glitz and glamour. Being in the marketplace as a non-pastor does not mean that it's a glamorous space, right? And I remember I was 15 years old. I wanted to buy my first car and I worked for the city. And I was stripping and waxing floors. I was painting. I was tearing down the city hall for weddings and events and getting it ready literally for state or not state, for city events um, each and every single summer. And I would work that job for four years. But in that process, like I realized... I'm going to strip and wax these floors to the best of my ability. I'm going to pray for every single event and over every single event, even if it's not God honoring, that they sense and they feel a presence that they've never felt before. And I remember I literally have worked in some form of custodial work for when I was from 15, probably till about 31 years old, literally that entire time. If I didn't wasn't cleaning one house on the side, I was cleaning multiple houses on the side. And you guys... I don't want to go crazy, but there are some things that I would walk into that you just don't know what you're going to walk into. I remember I was cleaning this house for this one lady. I won't say her name, but I'll say, I'll just walk. I walked into her house and she had a pet cat and she had like a doggy to us. Cat would go in and out of, and she was napping. The, the woman is napping when I get there. So she's like, oh, just put my groceries in here. Don't worry about it. So when you get here, this is what you have to do. Well, I get there and there is literally the cat had drug in a half live rabbit so I walk in the kitchen and it's like a bloodbath in there and I'm just like oh my gosh is everybody okay number one what in the world's going on and I had to clean up the mess because she was like in her 80s and it let her cat run crazy in the house pulling animals through the back door I have worked in places I've worked in churches I have scrubbed toilets and let me say scrubbing toilets is not glamorous and how people treat you is different than how they would treat you if they just different situations you know so if I walk into a store and I'm dressed the part to buy something they're gonna approach me but if I don't look the part and I don't look like if I look like I'm on a character I remember I used to shop at Hot Topic I don't know if you guys ever did but I went through this punk rock stage where if I were to walk into like a fancy Macy's like that dressed like I used to dress they wouldn't even like acknowledge that I was there but if I was dressed in my suit that I started working in the corporate world they were all over me wondering how they could help and I remember scrubbing toilets and let's say you get splashed in the face sometimes by stuff. And I just remember realizing, I'm like, God, you've created me for so much more than this. And I would walk through a phase where I was frustrated knowing that God had called me to specific things, but things weren't happening um, to what I thought they were supposed to happen. And God was really working on my character. He's like, if you, if I, I've called you to be a servant, then you need to learn how to be the best servant you possibly can. So get on your knees scrub this toilet like it was scrubbing it for the glory of God 
put in a podcast and let God work over your character. So there was times I literally would listen to people like Andy Stanley. Be like, how, how was work yesterday? Great. I had an eight-hour date with Andy Stanley. With who? Never mind. <laughs> you know, so I took opportunities in my singleness to be molded for where we are now. And granted, I'm being molded right now for what God has next. Good, so, yep. And none of that felt glamorous. None of that looked glamorous. But I was like, this is going to be the best toilet anybody sits on. It's going to be clean. Um, this house with this rabbit in it is going to be the best cleanest floor that you could possibly think of by the time I'm done with it and so many times it wasn't even just such a situation that I was cleaning God was cleaning me and my character and I hope that encourages somebody today if you find like you have a less than glamorous job or people look down on you wow let's just say that do the best that you can possibly do, and God's name will be honored and glorified in that process. So, so good. That's what I just have to share about that. <laughs> it's so good. And and Paul writes about this. You know, like, I love that the Apostle Paul, who was Saul of Tarsus, had his Damascus right. Road encounter where Jesus changed everything. He talked about vocation. He talked about mm-hmm. career and work. And in the New Testament, like, the gospel writers, Jesus talks about your life and your work and your money and, and your family. So all of these are things that we should be having questions mm-hmm. and conversations about. And one of the things that Paul writes to the church in Colossians 3.23 about, he just says, whatever you do, mm-hmm. work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Because the reality is, if you watch Shark Tank, if you watch The Prophet, if you don't, and you just Mm -hmm. live life, and you go to the gas station, or the grocery store, or the gym, or any place of public trade in the marketplace, Mm -hmm. you'll see, and you'll begin to ask the question I asked Micah recently. I was like, is there any good leaders? And sometimes the reality is we have bosses that are imperfect and they're flawed. And some, sometimes they do evil things. And so like that's one of the dynamics of the marketplace is working as to the Lord, not for humans. Well, and when you're in a non, when you're working with a non-Christian, I want to point this out, like their morals and their values are different than what we align as a believer in the totally. word of God. How we treat people, how we love, how we extend grace, how we process, how we pray, how we um, dress ourselves in the armor of God each and every single day. So to know that the ways of the world and the ways of God, you can't, they can't be, Trace. They're not exactly the same. They're two different moral compasses that are being lived out. So you may feel, which, what is the first one? I'll even on the list. Should I go there? Let's go there in just okay. a second. I want to use an illustration and an Ooh. example. Okay. And one of my favorite examples and illustrations of this lived out in the marketplace is somebody who would consider themselves a filmmaker, mm. an entertainer, um, a lot of these things. And... Um, who it is, is a guy by the name of Jack Vale. And you might be like, wait, the pooter guy? And some people are like, (laughs) that went over my head. The what? The who? And Jack (laughs) Vale is literally one of my favorite examples of this. He is a comedian. He's an actor. He's a filmmaker now. But how he got started was he invented a product with a wax mold, and he called it the pooter. And essentially, what the pooter is, is it's a whoopee cushion that he holds in his hand, he keeps it in his pocket anywhere he goes, and he carries waivers with him in his car that he has people sign who are participates, participation in, you know, who are put, participants, sorry. <laughs> he, they, he has them participate in his YouTube channel. And he'll go to like Target or Walmart and he'll, he'll like go with the whoopee cushion and it'll make the, the sound and people will laugh and they'll just document the reactions and it brings a smile on most people's face. <laughs> and you just realize, you know what, I'm, I, and, and then you talk to him about like, why do you do this? Is it to make money off YouTube? Well, that's a byproduct. Is it to sell pooters? Well, that's a product. That's a byproduct. His why is Colossians 3. It's for God's glory. And now he has his own, like, app. Mm. He has his own, like, streaming platform. And um, he's making Hollywood film movies. And it's just really cool. If you ask him about his faith, oh, yeah, he's, like, praying for people sometimes on YouTube live stream because it's for the glory of God and he's obedient. So I think let's start with number one here at the bottom. You had asked there. And I think, Mikey, you referenced that the first thing of five Mm -hmm. things that we're going to be called Mm -hmm to be a light in the dark. The first thing is become excellent at your craft. 
Hmm. And look, you were talk you were you were mentioning this as like, hey, if it's janitorial work, if it's cleaning houses, mm -hmm. if it's operating a small business, if it's mowing lots, whatever it is, if it's running mm -hmm. a blog and a social media account or Instagram follow, whatever it is, you know what? I'm going to become excellent at my craft because right. excellence honors God. Mm -hmm. And what's the second thing? I would say the second thing is expect to be misunderstood. I mean, people are going to wonder, why are you so filled with joy? Why are you happy? Why didn't you respond this way when you should have said this? So because your moral compass, like I was referring to earlier, is different. And because our reactions and actions should align with the Word of God, let me say, we're not perfect. We are flawed people. We are trying to live as Jesus did. But He is perfect. We are never going to be perfect. But expect to be misunderstood in how we process things, how we react, and how we act. And sometimes believers, we've, we've all been guilty of maybe maybe not making the most of the opportunities God has given us, right? Mm -hmm. So I would just want to encourage you, it's okay to be misunderstood because if you know who you are and whose you are, there's a confidence that comes with that. So. Oh my gosh. And the third is similar, but even one step deeper. Mm -hmm. It's be ready to be ridiculed or the subject of a joke. Mm -hmm. And what I'm not saying is give people something to laugh at. Like right. if you if you want to entertain, like, hey, that's Jack Vale, like to the glory of God, that's awesome. But like you don't want to be a weird Christian. You don't want to be a anything Christian. You just want to be a Christian Christian, a Christ follower. Mm -hmm. And sometimes Christians do weird things. So let's not give people a reason to make fun of us or give people a reason to make mm -hmm. us the subject of a joke. But I think... Naturally, look at this. Like, I can't tell you how many coworkers would cuss in front of me, or they'd mm -hmm. say something and they'd be like, "Oh, oops, sorry, my right. bad." Right. And it's like they would talk differently when I was around than if they were just by themselves. Right. And so, but that's what I'm saying about like, oh, there's the the guy who reads his Bible, or there's the Christian. But then those are the same people who like when they go through a breakup when life has them down, when maybe they get passed over for the job mm -hmm. or the promotion, they're reaching out now, years later, now that we're not employees or coworkers, right. like they're asking for help or prayer or guidance and direction in life. And I think that's like, hey, it's all right if you wanna make fun of me because first they're making fun of the Lord. Well, even Jesus says that if they reject you, it's because they rejected me first. Exactly. And that's just a good reminder that it's not always that they're rejecting us as believers or Christ followers. It's what we believe in, and that's Jesus. So, yep. yeah. so to recap, the first one is become excellent at what you do. That's right. Second thing is like, hey, be, be all right and make peace with being misunderstood. Mm -hmm. The third thing is be ready to be made fun of or a right. subject of a joke. And then we'll go four and five. I would say four is have fun. I think so many Christians or believers are – looked at it and they're just like, oh, well, Christianity can't be fun because there's a bunch of rules. Listen, God has given us this world as a playground. He's given you gifts. He's given you talents. He's given you things that you're passionate about to figure out, to problem solve, to learn how to make money through the craft and hone in on the things that God has naturally gifted you in. And I think so many times, like, we forget to have fun. Like, even wow. in the midst of COVID, Josiah and I said, we want and need to have more fun. We want to live more. We want to laugh more. And we want to be um, setting a, you know, tone in our home when people come, like, May they know that this is a place where they can be themselves, no matter what, no matter who they are, no matter what they're walking in or what, or what they're walking through. And let's do this and have fun. God's asked us to go on a wild, crazy adventure. Why not team up with him and get the blessing and the reward of who he is in the process of living out those passions? So, Man, and a quick example of like what this looks like is we have a couple daughters, and our older daughter is almost two, so she's like coming with us into Sam's Club or she's coming with me and I totally am that dad who's like jumping on the shopping cart going wee <laughs> and like we're having and then I ask her this I go Aurora who's having the most fun and she'll she'll say we are mm -hmm. we're having the most fun and like that's one of the things that we want to do is model like we're gonna have fun and then the other thing is like okay our family was sick this past week mm -hmm. we had to call the nurse and call the hospital and you know what the gal on the phone, and this happens all the time. This is just like yesterday, two days ago. Mm -hmm. But the gal who is a nurse, she called me back and she goes, 
I just interacted with her just like at this. I didn't mm-hmm. treat her any different than I would a listener on a podcast, a co-host, a guest right. on a podcast, a student at Chi Alpha, somebody at stranger Sam's Club, a Sam's Club, <laughs> stranger, whatever. And, and this is a nurse who's going to help our family. And she goes, you know what? You are the kindest, most pleasant customer that I've interacted with in days. And she goes, it's a Monday. It's been a long day. Mm -hmm. And I just go, hey, well, time out. I go, we're living in a kind of like pandemic, endemic, whatever. We're we're living in strange, uncertain (laughs) times. And I just go, thank you so much Mm -hmm. for the work that you're doing. She goes, you know what? I'm just doing my job. And that's the reality is people view it as, you know what? I'm just doing the job. But it's like, man, when is Mm -hmm. the last time that you go on mission to the gym and like, I'm going to open the door for somebody. I'm going to say welcome because this is my gym. Right. And thank you for coming. Like, we get to be hospitable, I think, is the thing that goes with that. And then number five mm-hmm. is watch for opportunities where anyone, anytime somebody experiences a loss, number one, or something unexpected in their mm-hmm. life. Mm-hmm. Because look, we're all going through loss. We're all going through hurts, hurdles, hangups, hiccups, hardships. Mm-hmm. And at, the, at times, we're all going to lose someone or something, whether it's a job, a loved one, or we're going to have something unexpected, a promotion, an out-of-state opportunity that we need to pray through and mm-hmm. process. And people are going through things that they weren't prepared for. Mm-hmm. Information around us is expiring by 30% a year. Studies are showing. Mm-hmm. And we have an opportunity that people are living in a world that education Mm -hmm. hasn't prepared us for. So we have the opportunity to be the manifest presence of Mm -hmm. Jesus, a.k.a. be Jesus with hands and Mm -hmm. feet. And that's the opportunity to watch for opportunities. We might be a patron, like a customer, or we might be the... You know the the leader in the marketplace, or the the employee, the the person helping, um, or a nurse, or a doctor, whatever it is. But we're going to become excellent mm-hmm. at our craft, and we're going to watch for opportunities to minister. Well, I think we forget like the the main question is, how do I live up my faith in the marketplace? We should be able to live out our faith not in the marketplace, but in our home, down the street, in the bank, on a deserted island. Like we should be the same person. If we are wanting to truly be the character and have the hands and feet of Christ and the heart of Christ, we should be the same person in each and every single one of those settings. And I think so many times that we forget this. Josiah and I, we don't have the answers. The word of God has the answers. It is literally a manual for how to live life, for how to do life, for how to live in community, for how to pray, how to process, how to... It's the how-tos of everything, literally. And the thing is, I want to encourage you today, if you're listening to this and you feel like, man, I'm just trying to survive. Well, guess what? We have the Word of God. We need to understand the will of God. But there's nothing that you are up against that, one, God doesn't already know. Yep. Or, two, He hasn't already dealt with. Wow. Meaning like if you look at anybody in the book, even Jesus in the book of the Bible, any book of the Bible that has a character, they're up against things. They're up against scrutiny. They're up against the wall that seems how in the world is X, Y, and Z going to happen? Guess what? God finds a way when there is no way. When we trust him, we don't sit there with our heads in the sand being like, okay, where's our God now? No, we're going to say, my God is this, 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 this. You name the characteristics of Christ when you need to declare victory, even over your mind, right? Even over the lies that we talked about at the beginning of feeling inadequate and un- unchosen, like you're not chosen and all these different things. And Jesus was up against everything that we've been up against. Does it look different in terms of time? Yes, Jesus wasn't tempted with technology right in front of him with a little, you know, cell phone or anything like that. But he was tempted by distractions. Technology can be a distraction. People can be a distraction. The calling of God on your life, there can be things that come along the way that are trying to, going to try to take you out and derail you. Why? Because the enemy knows how to get to you. So I just want to encourage you, if you feel like that is you today, maybe you're listening, you have not even put your faith in Jesus. You want to learn who this Jesus guy is. Listen, Jesus the same is the same as he was yesterday, today, tomorrow, forever. He is the same person and you can rely on him. So if you feel lonely, depressed, anxious, worried, fearful, 
any one of those things and millions more, whatever emotion that you are currently feeling, maybe you feel like, I don't even want to hear the fact that Jesus loves me. Well, guess what? It doesn't change the fact that Jesus loves you. And if you get into the word of God and you clothe yourself in his righteousness, he will equip you and prepare you each and every single day. It's not like this magic wand that you, you know, like you've worked through every problem in life. But I will say, if you read Acts, if you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and you get into the book of Acts, there is a boldness and there is something that can enter into your life when you say yes to Jesus. And that is a confidence that you get to have and get to walk in when you know who you are and whose you are in the name of Jesus. So, Yeah, and I think the the recap mm-hmm. to that is like, I remember a coworker asked me this in my Grand Slam days, and I was talking about Grand Slam at the top of the episode, like, he was just so confused why I would go to a church at the time on Sunday mornings and mm-hmm. Wednesday night. And he goes, dude, those are two great shifts. He goes, you could make more money. And I go, I know I could. And he goes, but dude, why are you a different person two-sevenths out of the week? And I was like, man, I go, if I'm wrong, I want to be seven-sevenths wrong. Mm. Like, I want to be wrong every day of the week if I'm wrong. Because I really believe that following Jesus, he is the way, the truth, yeah. and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through him. So it's like following Jesus isn't just this one hour a week mm-hmm. on Sunday and a Friday, FYI, Faith Me Up podcast. Following Jesus is 24-7, mm-hmm. 365 or 366 if it's leap year. <laughs> and I just look at like following Jesus is fun. It is a joy. And there's a challenge and there's a struggle and that's part of the adventure. Right. And there's unknowns, there's uncertainties, there's but guess what? All those things are true, even if you're a non-believer. But you right. don't know how to process some of that. You don't yes. have you don't have somebody to go to in a supernatural sense of taking away that fear, that anxiety, that worry, and understanding who your true identity is. Like I'm looking at him for my identity and who and my self worth, not to Josiah, not to the ways of the world, not to the stranger down the street. But I do pray that I do have a community of people around me that can call me out and call me up when it comes to my character in Christ. So so good and so i just say if you're wanting to take next steps in your faith Mm -hmm. if we can help you in any way you can visit www.fyi-podcast.com of course you can send follow-up questions about faith about life about adulting on the website as well as on instagram it's just at fyi podcast and um If you're looking for community, people to do life with, we just really encourage you to find a good Christian church, a Bible teaching church, Mm -hmm. as well as a small group, maybe a campus ministry, maybe it's Chi Alpha, maybe it's another one. And we have links to those resources Mm -hmm. on the website. So until next time, we look forward to hearing from you. This is Mike and Josiah saying have a great weekend.